Okay, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. It's my great pleasure to welcome you to day two of the American Society for Gene and Cell Therapy Symposium, entitled Cell Therapies in the Middle East, Where Do We Stand? My name is Jaindran Rao. I am a co-chair of this session along with Dr. Ali Bazarbaki. And in today's session, we have three exciting talks. And these talks fall under the broad umbrella of state of cell therapy development in the field. We would also have a panel discussion at the end of these talks, and I would strongly urge you to type your questions in the chat box as we move on. And for the sake of students, I would like to st uh, start with a brief introduction on CAR T cells. I'm going to share a slide. As you know, chimeric antigen receptor T-cell therapy, it basically involves the genetic modification of the patient's autologous T-cells to express a chimeric antigen receptor specific for a tumor antigen. Now, once we do this introduction of the chimeric antigen uh, receptor into the T-cell, it is followed by its ex vivo uh, expansion and reinfusion back to the patient. Chimeric antigen receptors have advantages of both of a monoclonal antibody, basically with its high affinity, and also the uh, ability of cytotoxic T cells, which has a great potential for cytotoxicity. And as you can see here, the chimeric antigen receptor construct itself has both these components, uh, a single chain fragment variable from a specific monoclonal antibody, and then the one or more T-cell receptor intracellular signaling domains. The uh, success of many clinical trials uh, pushed uh, the Science Magazine to declare this as one of the breakthrough of the year in the year 2013. And from there onwards, several clinical trials have shown very promising results in end-stage patients with a full recovery of close to about 90% for many of the uh, leukemias, particularly acute lymphocytic leukemia and several other products have been launched over the years. Now, these are available for a variety of indications from DLBCL to acute lymphoblastic leukemia to very recently multiple myeloma. And a majority of these products are typically available for hematological cancers. However, in terms of solid cancers, the progress has been there, but it is not to the level of uh, uh, liquid cancers. There are some issues currently, including the cytokine release syndrome, antigen escape, and the tumor fate of the chimeric antigen receptor carrying T cell. And there are also multiple strategies that are being proposed to overcome these issues. What we are going to hear today is uh, from experts, the ability and the current status of uh, uh, CAR T cell therapy in the Middle East. With this, I'm requesting my co-chair, Dr. Ali Bazarbaki, to uh, take on the uh, uh, speaker introduction. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening, uh, everybody. And I would like to uh, welcome you to this uh, second day of this uh, symposium about cell therapies in the Middle East. Where do we stand? And I would like to take this uh, opportunity uh, to thank uh, the American Society uh, for Gene and Cell Therapy for organizing uh, this uh, symp uh, symposium. So yesterday we had three great talks uh, uh, about uh, uh, CAR T cells uh, from eminent uh, speakers and uh, today we also uh, are looking forward uh, for three uh, great talks uh, uh, about the state of cell therapy development uh, in the field. So it's my privilege to introduce uh, the first speaker, uh, Dr. Uh, Mahmoud Al-Jurf. Uh, Dr. Al-Jurf obtained his medical degree and completed internship at King Khaled University Hospital in Riyadh in Saudi Arabia. Subsequently, he completed residency training in internal medicine at the Brigham and Women Hospital 
and Combined Hematology and Oncology Fellowship at Stanford University Medical Center. He also received a master's in public health from Johns Hopkins University and FRC PATH degree from the United Kingdom. Uh, Dr. Al Jurf is the director of the Adult Hematology Oncology Stem Cell Transplant Program and deputy director of the Oncology Center at King Faisal Specialist Hospital and Research Center. Uh, today, he will be speaking on progress with advanced cellular and gene therapy in Saudi Arabia. Uh, the, uh, Mahmoud, the floor is yours. Well, good morning. Uh, my name is Mahmoud Al Jurf. I work at King Faisal Hospital in Saudi Arabia. I would like first to thank the organizers for the kind invitation for this uh, important meeting. And what I thought I will share with you is our CAR T cell experience in Saudi Arabia, primarily at our institution. Uh, building on our hospital experience as a regional leader in the field of hematopoietic stem cell transplantation uh, that started in 1983. Uh, we made efforts since 2016 for establishment of an advanced cellular therapy and CAR T cell program. And during the past six years, uh, our hospital aimed to establish a world-class CAR T cell program by building a network with industry and academic players to enable technology transfer, attracting CAR T cell clinical trials, developing policies and standards to establish a safer program, and attracting talent in CAR T cell field, also facilitating patient access nationally and also at the regional level, and finally increase awareness and promoting CAR T cell related educational activities. Now, uh, given in this slide is the timeline for CAR T cell milestones starting, starting 2016, going in three direction, improving or like establishing availability of commercial CAR T cell and also working on, on in-house CAR T cell manufacturing. And the third dimension <clears throat> is being involved in the ongoing clinical trials. Sorry, this is a busy slide, but I just give you the summary of this slide. Now, our adult CAR T cell program works under the larger, um, large, bigger department, which is the stem cell transplantation and cellular therapy department. And that is part of the section of hematology, uh, which is part of the larger part of the oncology center. Now, we have established early in the program a multidisciplinary team, this team, uh, composed of a core team, uh, as shown here, which uh, consists of medical leads, um, uh, CAR T cell coordinators, inpatient nursing, outpatient nursing. This core team works with, uh, uh, collaborates with other services in the hospital related to the CAR T cell therapy, namely apheresis and the stem cell lab supporting the specialties, mainly ICU, neurology, infectious diseases, and emergency. And we have designated colleagues from these teams who were trained and were in service about CAR T cell therapy and complications. So we have designated attendings or consultants from these services for the CAR T cell team. And also uh, collaborating with the psychosocial support services, clinical instructors, clinical research department and registry, the research center, CAR T cell quality team, CAR T cell oversight committee, pharmacy, and obviously the manufacturers. I'm now talking about the commercial CAR T cells. Now, considering the limited availability of, the, of this new therapy technology, we have uh, made a lot of efforts to facilitate availability of this, of this uh, therapy nationally and regionally by enhancing communication between referring centers and the CAR T cell team, inviting referring physicians to our weekly multidisciplinary team meeting to present their cases, pre-screening patients prior, prior to clinic visits and re, uh, <clears throat> reserving the slots for CAR T cell collection within the, the laboratory side and doing our best to reduce the time from referral to first visit to less than one week or one week at most, 
and also important reducing the time from first visit to apheresis to less than two weeks. Now with that uh, kind of arrangement, we managed to get referrals from not only from Saudi Arabia, which is the major bulk of referrals, but also from neighboring countries uh, like Bahrain, Qatar, United Arab Emirates, and Oman. And for this kind of special therapy, our hospital would accept such a patients if they have a letter of financial guarantee from their corresponding country. Now we have our weekly CAR T cell multidisciplinary teaming team meeting, and it does have virtual com components, and it has uh, like uh, it is a platform that allows the referring physicians from external centers uh, to be involved through Microsoft Teams. And this will allow an expedited review and the provisional booking for cell collection to allow drop time from first visit to collection. And patients are selected according to criteria of the approved and uh, uh, approval and registration trial and according to the patient fitness. And uh, documentation of all cases discussed is usually made in the electronic medical records uh, uh, for each individual patient according to the recommendation and final recommendation of the multidisciplinary team we have also established a well written a guide for referring physicians uh, to better inform physicians uh, about about uh, all dimensions of this therapy and included in this guide is disease indications and patient eligibility, uh, wash out periods for drugs that needed to be stopped prior to stem cell collection, and uh, what to send with the patient and the prior patient preparation, and contact details for the CAR T cell team and coordinators. This was made available in the very nice print form, but also was shared in like uh, WhatsApp group, there are two WhatsApp groups, regionally. there is one national <clears throat> for physicians in Saudi Arabia, and there is one for Gulf Cooperative Council countries, and this guideline bo uh, booklet was, the electronic version was shared with, with uh, these physicians. Now, uh, this slide give a summary of the, the 12 months activity of our CAR T cell program using commercial products, 74 patients referred and screened. Out of these 74 patients, about 53 patients underwent apheresis. And 36 CAR T cell products were manufactured. Out of these, 20 patients received CAR T cell infusion, and uh, a few other patients are waiting infusion. Now, this is reflecting the adult program. The pediatric program had infused seven patients, so a, a total of 27 patients were infused with CAR T cell in the last 12 months at King Faisal Hospital, which is not a bad as a start, start up a program. Now, uh, uh, this summarizes um, uh, the current overall survival of patients who had received CAR T cell at our hospital. Obviously, the follow up is short. And because this is the whole thing started within a 12 months window, approximately a little longer. And uh, survival, as shown here, was 75%. And uh, uh, obviously, very favorable survival for the acute lymphocytic leukemia patients. And it was 52% for the non Hodgkin lymphoma patients. Now, given in this slide is a comparison of our survival data with the US real world registry data and registration trial. Obviously, our follow up is short, and but I have to say also the follow up of other trials published at the time of publication was not that long. And as you can see here, the for B cell ALL uh, data compared to the CIBMTR, the data presented by Mar Marcelo Basquini, uh, US real world data, and the Iliana trial uh, compares favorably with this, this the published data for both overall survival and even to three sur survival. And given on the right side of the slide for B cell non Hodgkin lymphoma, 
And this is in comparison with Joliet trial. And again, the, the outcome is favorable. But as I've said, the follow-up is short and this would wait for longer follow-up. Now, finished talking about uh, uh, commercial car T cell and shifting and talking about uh, in-house manufacturing. We had selected to choose the Prodigy Lintogen system and very efficient closed system and it's uh, traditional say is 10 to 14 days from vein to vein uh, average time and expected to be the first center in the middle east to conduct trials with car t cell manufacturing and have manufactured in-house of course this took a very very long time between institutional review board and more importantly with the national ethics committee and the saudi food and Saudi FDA to, to approve almost, I mean, the, the approval work took almost one whole year. Now, it's anticipated that we hope that we will do the first in-house manufactured car T cell infusion for ALL in the month of September this year. At the present, to approve the trial, Alacart 19, which will focus on acute lymphocytic leukemia, and there is also similar Phase one to study that will focus on non Hodgkin lymphoma, relapse, refractory non Hodgkin lymphoma. Now, uh, moving into the third dimension, which is engagement in clinical trials. And this is give summary of the uh, current engagement and uh, prospective BI. There is one trial that will open soon with Novartis for. Relapsed refractory myeloma PI, my colleague Dr. Amir Hambali, and another trial for newly diagnosed multiple myeloma by my colleague Dr. Saud Al Haili. And there is one for relapsed lymphoma by Dr. Riyad Al Faqih, for Dr. Riyad Al Faqih is the PI. And there is a phase four trial with Dr. The, the PI is Dr. Ali Al Ahmari for both ALL and, and uh, B cell lymphoma. Now, we also, our team was actively involved in scientific publications. And given here is a sample of some of the publications that our unit was involved in, mostly consensus documents that was published in uh, high impact journals. And, and several are, are, I mean, that uh, work is still ongoing uh, on other scientific material. Uh, either <clears throat> through institutional or in collaboration with other, other centers or again as a consensus uh, consensus material. Uh, the CAR T cell program uh, led by doc, my colleague Dr. Said Osman Ahmed had also uh, 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 established or created the three important documents uh, that serves as an important regional resource, most important, as I've mentioned, the CAR T cell manual. And uh, another, uh, another document was about uh, policies and the procedures, IPPs and SOPs, that was completed in December 2019, that was in collaboration with Medical College of Wisconsin and Mayo Clinic. And the third document is the service requirement. These documents are available uh, in electronic and, and uh, hard copies, and hopefully will help will help uh, regional start up the programs, and and facilitate collaboration between our center and any other center that might be uh, interested in collaborating and starting the CAR T cell program. Now back again to the the manual of uh, uh, as I talked about. This uh, this is a 70-page practical handbook for physicians and allied healthcare professionals, uh, written in a clear and easy to follow layout. This material took hundreds of hours to do the three documents, and it is anticipated that this handbook will eventually be published and be made widely available online uh, via our hospital port portal and also uh, through social media to healthcare providers in hematology community nationally and even internationally. Now, uh, several, uh, our institution and CAR T cell team had worked on several uh, CAR T cell related educational activities listed in this busy slide. Most notable was the uh, 
the national and regional conference we had in the year 2019 about advanced cellular therapy, uh, which had uh, 20 international speakers. This was done in collaboration with the Children's Hospital of Pennsylvania of Philadelphia and Mayo Clinic, MD Anderson, Baylor uh, College of Medicine, King's College London, and among other institutions. Now, finally, uh, we are also currently almost to about to complete uh, a special issue in the journal Hematology, Oncology, and Stem Cell Therapy of Elsevier. This special issue focuses on CAR T cell and advanced cellular therapy, and it does have almost like 15 articles, well written articles that will cover a um, uh, 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 large number of topics related to, to CAR T cell, from manufacturing to like vector production, bioreactors, and cellular therapy, how to establish CAR T cell program, and the clinical aspects. And uh, with that, I will conclude and thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Al Jurf, for this uh, very inspiring presentation. Uh, on a successful implementation of a state-of-the-art CAR T cell uh, program in the Middle East. I'm not able to uh, start my video. Uh, okay. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, uh, I, I think that uh, the CAR T cell program at the King Faisal Specialist Hospital and Research Center is a, uh, a pioneering example of a successful uh, uh, program that started in the Middle East. And uh, 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 I think that there is a strong need to have uh, uh, more centers uh, joining this type of uh, uh, program. So yesterday, basically, we discussed the science and a little bit on some uh, uh, economical aspects. And uh, today, we're uh, discussing uh, practical aspects about uh, uh, how to overcome the barriers uh, uh, to have access of CAR T cell therapy to the overwhelming majority of patients who are in need of CAR T cells and who are not uh, able uh, to have uh, uh, CAR T cells either because of the cost or because of uh, the lack of access. And uh, one way of uh, uh, overcoming this is the development of academic CAR T cell programs. Uh, so, and we have a very nice uh, example of that is the program that was developed in Barcelona, Spain. And I'm delighted to introduce uh, Dr. Alvaro Urbano Espiuza, uh, uh, who graduated from the Basque Country University in Bilbao, Spain. He trained in hematology in the postgraduate school of hematology of Hospital Clinic of Barcelona where in 1988, he achieved a staff post. Uh, Dr. Urbano is currently the director of the Clinical Institute of Hematologic and Oncological Diseases at the Hospital Clinico of Barcelona. Today, he will be speaking on the academic CAR T cell program from research to approval with a very successful uh, example on uh, uh, um, uh, implementing an academic CAR T that became uh, a standard of care uh, approved and yielding the same quality of results than commercial CAR T cell programs, but uh, I guess at a much lower uh, cost. Uh, Dr. Alvaro, the floor is yours.
So thank you very much for giving me the opportunity uh, to be in this event presenting uh, the Academic Artisan Program from Research to Approval. This is Alvaro Urbano Ispizua, um, uh, the, the Medical Director of the Department of Hematology and Oncology of the Hospital Clinic of Barcelona. We have heard uh, during this meeting uh, the extraordinary efficacy of CAR T cell therapy in refractory relapse, acute lymphoblastic leukemia, non Hodgkin lymphoma, and multiple myeloma. So I think it is great news that we have available in some countries, in the United States, in Europe, several commercial cars for patients with refractory acute lymphoblastic leukemia, different subtypes of lymphoma, and also for multiple myeloma. However, uh, the cost of uh, uh, prescribing a car is very high, and the process of preparing a commercial car is also quite complex uh, in the sense of uh, sending the cells of the patients to a central factory, sometimes a hundred or, or, or thousands of kilometers uh, far from the original uh, uh, location of the patient, and sometimes with delays between the prescription to the administration of the car to the patient. One alternative uh, to these commercial cars is to prepare uh, the cars in the own hospital uh, in which it is being treated, the patient. So is to prepare academic cars uh, in a similar manner that we have prepared the graft, the inoculum for a patient in a bone marrow transplant setting. So the advantages of preparing a car uh, in an academic center. In an academic center is first, is cheaper. Uh, many of the salaries are already paid by the hospital. Uh, some infrastructures are already uh, in place. Uh, the preparation is much quicker. Uh, in uh, maximum two weeks, uh, the cars uh, may be prepared for the patient. May cover more indications and diseases than those uh, approved uh, uh, for, the, for the commercial car. And we may implement, we may incorporate uh, some improvements or things that we consider that may increase the clinical useful, usefulness of the car. So all in all, uh, these uh, characteristics of an academic car may increase the access to car therapy to more patients. Obviously, uh, uh, the academic setting must demonstrate that this academic car uh, is equal uh, uh, in terms of uh, quality, in terms of uh, clinical efficacy to the equivalent of a commercial car. Let me explain you uh, the, 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 the experience of the Hospital, of the hospital Clinic of Barcelona uh, preparing during the last uh, five, seven years, uh, preparing uh, two cars. Uh, one is a car 19 called RE1, uh, 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 and the second is a car BCMA called RE2. Uh, the, the car RE1 was prepared using a monoclonal antibody that was produced in the immunology department uh, 30 years ago. And for car BCMA, is a G22 that has been modified that has been humanized uh, for trying to decrease the immunogenicity in the, in, the, in the patient and rejection of the car. So these two fragments of the, uh, of the monoclonal antibody, the, the genetic sequence of, this, uh, of the single chain variable fragment of the monoclonal antibodies were, were fused to a questinatory molecule for one BB and to a uh, CD3 uh, CETA chain of the T cell receptor. This genetic construct was cloned into a lentiviral particle, a third generation, is a PCCL, uh, and, and this, uh, this uh, genetic construct um, with the, in the lentiviral particle was transduced to T cells from the patient. So first is uh, uh, to demonstrate that this uh, genetically modified T cell with this genetic construct was effective and specific of cell lines expressing either CD19 or BCMA. So we did it in, in, in vitro and in vivo. So once we demonstrated that our car uh, had this specificity and, and efficacy, we uh, uh, set up a GMP facility 
for uh, producing enough number of lentiviral particles for clinical use. Uh, for that purpose, we use uh, uh, packaging cells, HEC cells, uh, for, uh, for preparing the lentiviral particle uh, with the different uh, plasmids of the lentiviral particle, including the plasmid uh, that incorporates the genetic construct of our car. So uh, this process uh, takes uh, 14 days of, of work and, uh, and the number of, of lentiviral particles obtained during this process is enough for 20 patients. This is how, how we prepare uh, our own cars for our patients. Is, uh, first is we uh, select uh, using an immune selection uh, magnetic method, uh, uh, the T cells from the leukapheresis of the patients. These T cells are activated using anti-CD3 and anti-CD28. After activation, T cells are incubated with the lentiviral particles that we have prepared in uh, the GMP facility. These lentiviral particles will transduce the genetic construct that will uh, codify the expression of the T cell uh, uh, receptor with the questimulatory molecule with the fragment of the molecular antibody that's in the, the, the car. These cars are expanded using interleukin 7 and interleukin 15 for obtaining enough numbers for clinical uh, usefulness. These three uh, steps, uh, T cell immune selection, activation, incubation with the antiviral particles and expansions, all these steps are uh, performed in a semi-automatic closed uh, system. In our case, uh, the Clinimax, uh, Clinimax uh, prodigy. So do, do we obtain uh, enough numbers of cars for clinical use using this platform? The answer is yes. We have prepared uh, cars for more than uh, 170 patients. Uh, 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 this is a preliminary analysis when uh, uh, performed uh, uh, three years ago when, when uh, we had produced uh, cars for 27 patients. You may see uh, that the number of cars that we obtain uh, using the, the PRODI is much higher than we actually need. So this is what we plan to treat for treating a patient is one times 10 to the six cars per kilogram for acute lymphoblastic leukemia patients and five times 10 to the six uh, cars per kilogram for non-Hodgkin lymphoma. And this is what we obtain after a car expansion in the Prodigy machine. So 20 times 10 to the 6 per kilo, cars per kilogram in, for an adult, uh, close to 70 times 10 to the 6 cars per kilogram for pediatric patients. Uh, an important point is to identify the, uh, in this car population after expansion uh, is uh, uh, how many of these uh, cars uh, uh, have the phenotype associated with long persistence in peripheral blood. So 44% of the cars obtained after expansion uh, have uh, this phenotype of knife cells, stem cell memory cells, or central memory cells. So once we had prepared uh, in our hospital, hospital clinic, the system for uh, first the, the, the genetic construct, second to have enough number of lentiviral particles, uh, next, uh, to have a system for expanding uh, the cars, we ask for uh, the Spanish Agency of Medicine the approval of four clinical trials. Uh, the, for uh, RE1, CAR19, uh, PI is uh, Dr. Delgado. Uh, so we have performed uh, two clinical trials. The first one is in pediatrics and adult uh, acute lymphoblastic leukemia patients in relapse, refractory the vast majority of them uh, in relapse after allogenic stem cell transplantation and for patients with non-Hodgkin lymphoma. So this clinical trial is already closed. I will show you some results. And now we are including patient, patients in a second clinical trial. It's a phase two. is focused on adult acute lymphoblastic leukemia because we don't have available in Spain a card for this population, adult ALL. Uh, uh, the, the, the car we have for acute lymphoblastic leukemia is Kimraya for, for uh, patients uh, uh, younger 
than uh, 25, 25 years. So two clinical trials for car cma for multiple myeloma patients, PI is Dr. Fernandez uh, Larrea. The first clinical trial is already closed. I, I will show you some results. And now we are including patients in a second, uh, in, in a phase two uh, clinical trial. So first thing is to know whether uh, uh, our car, the car produced by ourselves, uh, is similar in terms of toxicity and efficacy to other cars uh, prepared by other groups or by uh, a, a pharma company. So uh, we have uh, focused our, our main experience in adult refractory acute lymphoblastic uh, leukemia. Uh, in this setting, this is, these are the results of the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Center. Uh, you may see how the disease-free survival for those patients achieving a complete remission is of 37% after long follow-up. Very similar are the results obtained with Axicel in uh, Thuma 3. Uh, uh, you may see how uh, at one year after, uh, of, of follow-up, disease-free survival is also similar to 37%, although it's a bit worse after longer follow-up. And this is the, the toxicity associated with the, with, with the car is, uh, is the ICANS is 25% uh, of grade uh, three or superior. These are our results with RE1, with, with our own car in, in 55 uh, patients, uh, the vast majority, the mass majority of them, 95, 90% of the patients were in relapse after allogenic stem cell transplantation. So in this setting, you may see how disease-free survival is 39% uh, after long follow-up. Of note, uh, uh, there was very low, very few patients developing uh, CRAs of grade three or, or, or higher, 11%, and just 2% of ICANN's grade three or higher. So good efficacy and with low uh, the profile of uh, toxicity. So we are now in a second, uh, in, 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 in a phase two clinical trial for the adult ALL patients, refractory to conventional uh, treatment, in which we are trying to increase the efficacy of the car. So we obtain that this 37, 40% of disease-free survival uh, uh, because 50% uh, of the patients had a relapse after, uh, after the car. And this relapse was uh, CD19 positive in most of them due to the loss uh, of uh, the, the car. So trying to increase the persistence of the car, we are administering not only this one time 10 to the six per kilogram fractionated in three dose, but we are adding a four dose of two times 10 to the six car per kilogram trying to increase the persistence, the efficacy of the cars and to decrease the relapse CD19 uh, positive. So uh, this uh, clinical trial uh, is, uh, is, in, is involving seven, uh, uh, seven centers. Uh, Hospital Clinico Barcelona uh, will produce the lentiviral particle and the cars and will be uh, distributed to the rest of the centers uh, in, in the clinical trial. So we are now in the middle of the clinical trial, we have already included 15 out of the 30 patients planned in the clinical trial. So based in these results uh, uh, with our car in adult ALL, uh, the Spanish Agency of Medicine and the Spanish Ministry of Health have authorized the use of our car for all Spanish uh, patients uh, with refractory acute lymphoblastic leukemia older than 25 for using our car in them and uh, without the need of a compassionate use or without the need of entering the patient into a clinical trial. So it's just the, the indication of the physician, prescription of the physician, and we prepare the car for that patient, we administer the car and we receive the reimbursement of the Ministry of Health for the cost associated to the car. So as a regular uh, drug as a regular medicine in Spain. Now we are in the process of trying to obtain the centralized authorization by the European Medicine uh, Agency 
the IMA uh, that has considered uh, our car as a priority medicine. So they have uh, they have designed the drug as a prime. So we are now in the process of trying to obtain a central authorization in Europe of our car for distributing to other European uh, countries. We have used this car not only for uh, adult ALL or uh, but also in non-Hodgkin lymphoma. This is one uh, case uh, with, a, a high, uh, with a high tumor burden in, in the lung with a diffuse large cell lymphoma that didn't respond to the, to the car, but uh, the patient obtained a, second comp a, a, a complete remission after administering anti-PD-1. So the car itself is, is not only effective uh, on its own, but also considering as a platform for trying to stimulate the immune system against the, 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 the tumor. We have also used the RE1, our CAR-19, uh, in several indications in which there is no commercial CAR available, for instance, in chronic lymphocytic leukemia. And these are our nine first patients with CLL receiving, uh, uh, receiving a, a, a CAR-19. Uh, uh, the main indication was Rister syndrome in six uh, of them. Uh, the nine patients, 100% of the patients, achieved a complete remission in the peripheral blood and bone marrow infiltration. Uh, uh, and, and with respect to the Rister syndrome, six uh, uh, of the cases, so three out of uh, these six patients achieved a complete remission. The other three, the other three, uh, were in partial response and progressed and of note uh, with CD19 uh, 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 negative uh, cells. So what about the CAR, CAR, uh, CAR BCMA? Uh, we uh, initiated a clinical trial of uh, CAR BCMA uh, uh, in uh, five Spanish centers. Uh, we prepared the antiviral particle, we prepared the CARs, and also we train another a second center at the Clinica Universitaria de Navarra for preparing also the cars. We demonstrated the, uh, the similarity of both uh, sides for preparing the cars, splitting one leukapheresis of a healthy donor, 50% uh, to, uh, uh, to this side, to this place, 50% to the other. Results pre uh, expanding the cars were identical after three of these uh, experiments, uh, we initiated the clinical trial preparing the cars in these two sites and administering the cars not only in these two centers, but also in these three. So in this uh, clinical trial, uh, we introduce uh, 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 something that is uh, that uh, has not been tested uh, as far as we know. Uh, in other clinical trials in, car, in multiple myeloma, which is to administer an additional dose uh, from month three or four after the first dose of the CARS, trying to <clears throat> consolidate the response of turn obtained with the first uh, with the first dose. So we fractionate the first dose, trying to uh, decrease the toxicity of the car, and also to increase uh, the, the dose of the car intra, intra patient. So this fractionating is for decreasing toxicity and increasing the dose of the car. This uh, fourth dose, uh, four months after the first dose is trying to increase the efficacy of the, of the car. So how was the efficacy of, uh, of our of of our own car, uh, anti-PCMA in multiple myeloma patients, refractory to uh, the three most important family of, of, of treatment against uh, multiple myeloma. So you may see how the stringent complete remission in 30 patients treated with our car was of 63%. So between uh, the 37% of stringent complete remission obtained with either cell and 83% uh, stringent complete remission obtained with a uh, silta cell. Uh, a very important uh, aspect is that uh, with our car, the toxicity was very low. So in fact, no single patient had 
a grade three or superior CRS, or no patients had any type of uh, neurotoxicity. This is an actuarial curve of progression free survival. Uh, and uh, you may see how uh, the, after a median follow up of uh, 17.5 uh, months, uh, the median progression free survival has not yet uh, reached. Uh, these results uh, have been presented uh, very recently at the European Hematology Association by Dr. Fernandez Larrea. This efficacy was also observed uh, in patients uh, with plasmocytomas at the, uh, uh, before administering the CARS, and uh, three months later, and, and, and 15 months later. And in, importantly, this patient is still in complete remission 20 months after the, the administration of the CAR. Uh, 50% of the patients have relapsed uh, in, in, in this uh, multiple myeloma uh, clinical trial. And uh, you may see how one of the uh, immune escape uh, 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 way uh, of, of, of these plasma cells is uh, decreasing the density of BCMA on the surface. So the, the, the density of BCMA in, uh, is lower uh, in relapse as compared to the density in plasma cells before administering the, the car. So this fourth infusion was uh, uh, effective. Uh, 10 patients, so 24 patients uh, have received this fourth infusion of the 30 patients. So of these 24 patients in 14, we couldn't uh, uh, evaluate the, the clinical efficacy because they were already in a streaming complete remission prior to the reinfusion. But 10 patients had some type of activity of multiple myeloma when received this four dose. And you may see how six out of these 10 patients uh, uh, improved the response after reinfusion. So uh, we are convinced that this uh, four dose that to administer a consolidative dose on month four has clinical usefulness. So in conclusion, uh, uh, academic cars, uh, the production of the car is cheaper, is one third, the cost of a car is one third of, an, of a commercial car, is faster, in eight days we may prepare the car, uh, so it's cheaper and faster than a commercial car, uh, may cover more indications and more diseases, uh, is just to have the antigen on the surface of the and to be uh, indicated by the physician and to be accepted by the uh, by the Ministry of Health uh, in terms of compassionate use, facilitates a rapid incorporation of unmet uh, medical needs, and as I have tried to demonstrate in terms of toxicity and uh, clinical results, uh, these academic cars uh, have the same quality, efficacy, and safety than commercial cars. So this is, uh, all this work has been performed by a multidisciplinary team, including not only physicians, researchers, but also people from the management of the hospital uh, and, and other uh, areas of um, the, the hospital. Uh, so thank you very much for, for your attention and I will be very pleased uh, to answer any question if, 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 there, is, if, if uh, there are any. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Urbano, for a wonderful presentation. Uh, uh, I uh, actually, I must disclose that uh, at the American University of Beirut uh, in Lebanon, uh, since 2018, uh, we are in uh, discussion and working closely with Dr. Urbano and his team in Barcelona uh, for technology transfer of CAR T production. Uh, to AUB, uh, so I think this is something that we can uh, discuss at the end during the uh, uh, Q&A and discussion uh, section. So now I'm delighted to uh, give the chair to Dr. Rao, who will, will introduce the third speaker. Thank you very much, Dr. Ali. And uh, our next speaker is going to be Professor Christian Chabanon. Um, who is a professor of medicine in cell biology at the Marseille University School of Medicine, Marseille, France. 
He is also a board certified physician who specializes in hematology and medical oncology. Practicing at the Institute Pauli at Calmet in Marseille, France, and at the Comprehensive Cancer Center, Marseille, France. Without further ado, I am now requesting Dr. Christian to deliver his talk on the supply chain for autologous CAR T cells and other immune effector cells. Dr. Christian, the floor is yours. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, depending on which part of our planet you are listening to this uh, presentation and attending this meeting. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers of the meeting, as well as the uh, American Society for Gene and Cell Therapy for uh, inviting me to be part of this uh, event. Uh, the topic I will cover over the next uh, 25 minutes um, is in relation to regulatory aspects of CAR T cells and the consequences on the manufacturing administration uh, of this new category of medicinal products, operational consequences for treating hospitals. Here are my uh, disclosures. So may, maybe I'll bring a, a sort of European flavor or European uh, point of view in this uh, series of uh, presentation. Uh, as a reminder, uh, where do we stand in June uh, 2022 uh, in terms of access to CAR T cells? This table and the uh, next one uh, attempts to summarize the situation. Uh, first slide is for patients with uh, relapsed or refractory uh, lymphoma. The next slide is for patients with relapsed or refractory multiple myeloma. And I didn't prepare a slide for uh, patients with relapsed or refractory acute lymphoblastic uh, leukemia, but this is obviously the third and important uh, indication, also uh, uh, with a smaller patient population. On this slide, we can have a look at what uh, type of products are available to uh, European patients. So we have four at the moment for patients with relapsed or refractory uh, lymphoma, TISA cell, uh, axi cell, liso cell, and uh, brexu cell. Um, slightly uh, different uh, indications that derived from the data produced in the uh, registration trials for these four different medicinal products. The first two products, TISA cell and axi cell, were approved uh, in August of 2018 uh, by the European Medicines Agency, uh, more or less a year later than they were approved in the USA by the Food and Drug Administration. Obviously, the car differs from one product to another uh, with different co-stimulation domains. And the uh, techniques, the technology used to genetically engineer the autologous uh, T lymphocytes uh, collected in the patient is also different depending on the product and the manufacturer. Uh, for some products, this is lantiviral vectors. For some others, these are uh, retroviral vectors. Registration trials were uh, phase one, two trials, single arm, uh, limited number of treating centers, limited number of uh, treated patients, relatively short follow-up, um, and uh, results are shown uh, in uh, this column, the overall uh, response rate ranging somewhere from uh, 50 plus person to 85 percent, also depending on the type of uh, uh, relapsed refractory non-Hodgkin's lymphoma that were treated. The incidence of uh, side effects, including cytokine release syndrome or CRS, and uh, immune effector cells associated neurological syndromes or ICANT neurotoxicity also uh, differs uh, from one trial to the other, 
but also these figures may uh, seem to be quite high. Uh, the proportion of patients who develop uh, severe grade three or more uh, side effects is actually uh, much lower and probably decreasing with the learning curve. Nevertheless, it is uh, obviously important that we check that real world condition data match uh, data uh, observed in registration trials. And we do now have some publications, mostly from the USA, but we start to have publications coming out from uh, European centers, European cooperative groups, and European uh, registries. Uh, all these data are quite reassuring, uh, showing that in most instances, the uh, efficacy data as well as the safety data are quite similar to the ones uh, observed in the registration trials. The experience is more uh, limited in the field of uh, multiple myeloma. Uh, we now uh, have access to two different CAR T cells that target BCMA or B cell maturation antigen, so a different tumor antigen than for patients with lymphoma, where the target antigen was CD19. The registration trials were published more uh, recently, both for IDE cell and SILTA cell. The um, um, marketing authorization was granted in the last few months, both in the USA by FDA and in Europe by uh, the European Medicines Agency. And the uh, overall uh, response rate uh, is quite high uh, with uh, safety profiles that uh, are um, quite uh, acceptable. Obviously in this field, we do not have uh, access to real world conditions. Uh, market access for these products is too new that we had time to collect uh, information and treated patients in registries. Coming to the very point of my presentation, what is the uh, regulatory status of CAR T cells? Again, uh, and as already mentioned, they belong to a new class of medicinal uh, products. Regulations may significantly vary from one country uh, to another, and, and in turn, this will differently affect manufacturing conditions and, uh, and, and administration. Nevertheless, in most countries, they are considered as medicinal products. And let me stress that although they are hematopoietic cellular therapy, CAR T cells are thus regulated very differently from hematopoietic cell transplant, whether autologous or allogenic. They are regulated as gene therapies, and they are considered as genetically modified organisms. And these three attributes have practical implications and practical uh, consequences in the hospital organization needed to uh, properly administer these, patients, these products to patients. CAR T cells are medicinal products, meaning that manufacturing conditions must comply with good manufacturing practice, practices or GMP. And GMP is a complex and evolving set of standards, not only a matter of working in control environments as already meant, as often mentioned, but also uh, many other obligations, including the obligations to control raw materials and audit product and service providers. And from that viewpoint, since collection facilities assisted by cell processing facilities, whether operated by hospitals or by blood banks, provide the starting material for CAR T cells manufacturing, they face these requirements since they behave as suppliers to the uh, manufacturer. And this explains why, why treating hospitals are facing multiple audits from multiple manufacturers for multiple uh, products. And this repetition of audits and on-site evaluations 
obviously uh, create a problem to treating hospitals in terms of uh, human resource time and energy devoted to get prepared for being qualified uh, as a treating hospital. The manufacturing process is obviously very different. It's, it's illustrated on this slide. On the right hand side of the slide is illustrated the uh, conventional manufacturing process for conventional drugs. This is batch manufacturing that will allow to sample a batch to check that it fulfills all the predefined specifications for a defined drug and obviously a batch that does not fulfill all these predefined specifications will be eliminated and the manufacturing process will be started again until the manufacturer can prove that the uh, uh, medicinal product is fully compliant with these specifications. CAR T cell manufacturing process, the batch is limited to a single product. It's personalized to each patient. Obviously, there is inherent variability of starting product since this is human material. The manufacturing process is quite complex with several uh, manual steps. This requires a specialized facility with highly trained personnel. And despite all these precautions, uh, in a small fraction of manufactured products, this will lead to the manufacturing of an out-of-spec product, uh, which in some cases can be clinically used uh, based on re-evaluation of the uh, risk-benefit ratio for the patient. The logistics along the supply chain is illustrated on this slide and again is quite complex, needing a tight coordination between the referring hospital and the treating hospital for the patient to get access as soon as possible to the needed CAR T cells. And on the right hand side of the slide, you can see the different steps starting from the uh, blood, the autologous blood mononuclear cells being collected through a pharesis from the patient, being shipped to the manufacturing site where T cells are separated from the other mononuclear cells, genetically engineered through uh, various technologies, amplified and then formulated as a cryopreserved cell suspension that is being shipped back to the treating hospital. The manufacturing process also includes QC and the results of QC is needed for the gene therapy medicinal product to be released by the qualified pharmacist and it adds to the needed time for the uh, uh, final release of the manufactured product. So the turnaround time during which the patient must be uh, managed clinically so to be in a good condition to receive his or her treatment. Please note that during the manufacturing process, there is a switch in regulatory status. The collected cells from the patient are uh, cells, not for therapeutic use. And the final product, again, is a medicinal product. And since this is a medicinal product, upon reception, CAR T cells fall under the responsibility of the hospital pharmacy and not the cell processing facility or the stem cell lab. That doesn't mean that at some sites, hospital pharmacies uh, uh, may have elected to delegate some technical tasks to technologists and scientists, pharmacists or physicians working in the neighboring processing facility or stem cell lab, taking into account the expertise in the field of cryobiology and as defined in a written agreement, but they cannot delegate the responsibility of the product. And increasingly, we are seeing hospitals where hospital pharmacies elect to install and operate a cryobiology facility inside their premises and train their own personnel provided that they uh, are properly trained uh, with the specifics of each CAR T cell product. As previously mentioned, CAR T cells are gene therapy medicinal products, and this is because their biological and clinical activity directly derives from the recombinant DNA sequence that is inserted in the engineered T cells. Uh, 
Gene therapy medicinal products are a subcategory of advanced therapy medicinal products or ATMBs as defined by the European Regulation 1394 published in 2007. And this is valid for Europe and associated countries. They are also living drugs that can persist for extended periods of time in the recipient and elicit clinical effects, even several months or several years after administration. And this long-term follow-up is needed to ensure persistence of disease control, patient safety, and measure the actual medical value of this new class of medicinal products as uh, mandated for uh, health technology assessment uh, agencies, as an example. And finally, CAR T cells are genetically modified organisms or GMOs. The regulator will consider the risk of dissemination in the environment, which is obviously uh, of a different nature during the manufacturing process and during the final stage of clinical use upon administration to the patient. But for treating hospitals, this means that they have to implement special uh, precautions to discard, as an example, the primary bag in which the T cells were uh, stored and contained before they were administered to the patient. This also means that there is a, at least a theoretical risk to treated individuals that the process used to genetically engineer autologous or allogeneic immune effector cells may cause their clonal expansion or oncogenic transformation through mechanisms such as insertional mutagenesis. And this is one of the major reasons for uh, which both FDA, EMA, and other healthcare agencies mandated long-term follow-up. And this is an obligation that is upon the uh, marketing authorization holders, the pharma companies. We've looked at the supply chain, a complex supply chain, but beyond the supply chain, there are other problems to be dealt with. CAR T cells have a peculiar safety profile and they are among the most expensive medicinal products ever marketed. In terms of safety and tolerance, it is of utmost importance to properly manage the early and possibly life-threatening side effects that, uh, and thus that several conditions are met by treating hospitals. Specific training of all categories of healthcare professionals that care for CAR T cells treated patients is mandatory and planned and immediate access to critical resource in case acute and severe side effects appear must be in place. This includes and is not restricted to tocilizumab being immediately available to counter the appearance of cytokine release syndrome, as an example. MRI imaging and specialized evaluation by neurologists in case ICANS appear and the possibility to transfer patients to the ICU in case their status is um, not improving despite uh, all the measures previously mentioned. So risk mitigation plans must be in place and this is an essential part of the uh, qualification process for treating hospitals by pharma as well as uh, legal authorization by healthcare authorities in each country. Safety issues also deal with potential long-term side effects and whenever they happen exploring their relation to CAR T cells and uh, uh, delineating the potential contribution of other aspects of the patient medical history. And this analysis may be extremely complex in certain situations. In any case, collecting data in real world conditions and collecting high quality data in real world conditions is of utmost importance. And there is there a role for existing or de novo uh, created uh, registries and the CIBMTR registry in the USA, the EBMT registry in, the, uh, in Europe are examples of such initiatives. 
financial aspects, uh, some say financial toxicity, the sum of the uh, medicinal product cost in the range of 300,000 to, to 400, 500,000 uh, dollars or euro, plus the cost of inpatient, outpatient and supportive care, results in CAR T cells being among the most expensive treatments ever marketed. Again, registration trials were mostly phase one, two trials, and thus it is critical to confirm that data observed in real world conditions match results of registration trials. And as mentioned in the uh, first slides of my presentation, this is, uh, um, this is the case uh, so far. But again, more data and longer follow-up are still needed to reach robust conclusions. And data harmonization is a, a, a critical aspect in, in running registry. I, borrow, I borrowed this slide from uh, another presentation made on behalf of the go -CAR Coalition, which is an initiative jointly supported by EBMT and the European Hematology Association, EA, bringing together uh, multiple stakeholders in the, interested in the development and in the evaluation of CAR T cells. And the tension is between the data that manufacturers and regulators want, more complex data, more data, and data that centers can reasonably report in a timely way in a routine clinical care uh, setting. So talking together to uh, reach uh, a, a mutually profitable agreement is, is critical. Despite the uh, novelty of these treatments and the novelty of the needed organization, these data from the EBMT registry show that European centers adopted quite fast the treatments with CAR T cells starting in 2018, 2019. You can see that treatments are available at most uh, European uh, centers. I, will let, I would like to conclude my presentation by briefly uh, um, reflecting on the case for point of care manufacturing. What are the potential benefits of uh, resorting to point of care manufacturing rather than central manufacturing through access to commercial and industry manufactured CAR T sets? Potential benefits include lower manufacturing costs, treating patients with orphan indications and for whom no commercial alternative exists, and run early phase, usually phase one, two trials with uh, innovative uh, CAR T cells. In Europe, this is possible in the context of the hospital exemption, which is embedded in the uh, European regulation uh, 1394 published in 2007. Unfortunately, the hospital exemption is implemented at the national level with significant heterogeneity across countries and is restricted to mostly autologous products manufactured on a relatively small scale. The challenge for hospital-based or blood bank-based tissue establishments or processing facilities that wish to establish point-of-care manufacturing capacities is to raise their, standard, their standards to the level of good manufacturing practices. This is a matter of resource, but this is also a matter of culture and education. Uh, healthcare professionals are not trained in the field of uh, GMP. And this is a matter of strategy and politics for institutions. How can not-for-profit organizations make such activities sustainable? There are two potential models for point-of-care manufacturing. The first one is for academic tissue establishments to build on their own capacities and resource, and thus process validation is part of the project. And the second one is to work with an industry partner that transfers ready to use and somewhat captive technologies. And in that case, obviously the financial burden is shared between the different partners and process validation is being conducted by the industry partner. 
The capacities for point-of-care manufacturing of innovative immune effector cells-based therapies strikingly vary across Europe and the world. I am a bit sad to report that my own country, France, is not really well advanced in the field. While some activities are thriving in other European countries, including uh, Germany, the Netherlands, Spain, and, uh, and, and the UK, although uh, obviously the UK is no longer uh, part of Europe, but remains in our art. This is largely influenced by the regulatory environment and healthcare policies. It requires strong association of expertise, public private partnerships, and usually takes place at major academic centers with uh, both basic translational and clinical research teams. A good example is the Spanish example and the development of anatologous CAR T cells targeting CD19 that uh, our colleagues from Barcelona, uh, led in particular by uh, Alvaro Urbano Espizua, have, have called ARI0001. Uh, and they use the hospital exemption pathway to develop this uh, uh, autologous CAR T cells to bring it to patients at several uh, Spanish uh, centers in strong uh, collaboration and tight collaboration with the Spanish authorities. And more recently, they received the prime designation uh, from the European uh, medicines uh, agencies, potentially helping them to develop this product in other countries uh, across Europe. In conclusion, I would like to uh, stress the fact that, again, CAR T cells represent a new class of medicinal products with very specific uh, regulatory aspects, both for manufacturing and administration, that despite this novelty and difficulties, they have been quite rapidly adopted at uh, European centers, as well as many other centers in, in the world, that they bring new hopes to uh, patients who are affected by uh, advanced uh, lymphoid malignancies, and that we expect this success in the field of lymphoid malignancies to be replicated in other fields in oncohematology, in medical oncology and solid tumors, and possibly beyond oncology in the field of uh, chronic diseases, inflammatory diseases, and autoimmune diseases, thus uh, again making it a very appealing uh, possibility to treat a broad range of, of, of ailments. I would like to thank all my colleagues uh, in Marseille at the Institut Polycalmet Comprehensive Cancer Center at Aix-Marseille University, all my colleagues at EBMT with whom I partnered for uh, many years, and thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Christian, uh, for this very wonderful talk. Uh, I think, uh, you know, it was very insightful and I'm sure that uh, as we discuss in the panel, more questions would emerge. So I now request all the panelists uh, to be live uh, and uh, probably we'll start the panel discussion. Uh, should we go with the questions that are already in the chat box? Uh, would that be fine for everyone? Yes, I think so. Thank you. Uh, so I think the first question was uh, to Dr. Aljaruf. How would you facilitate transferring this experience from your center to other tertiary oncology centers in Saudi Arabia and also to other Middle Eastern countries? This was the first part of the question. I think uh, uh, we just... Uh have put like, okay, like guidelines, uh, things related to, uh, mostly related to the IPPs or what you call it, SOPs, matters related to the clinical side, matters related to the laboratory sites, matters related to the patient, and matters related also to uh, 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 the partner, like commercial partner, for example, if we're talking, uh, I mean, realistically speaking, if you are to start a program, you have to think about commercial products rather than in-house manufacturing. So these uh, SOPs and IPPs, which took time to put together, and now it like can compound it in, in a few documents, like binded documents, and can be shared 
with with other institutions. Uh, obviously, uh, other issues is important once you're talking about commercial. Like what other colleagues have had mentioned is um, is financial support, and this is a, um, a prohibitively expensive um, therapies, and I think. It depends on what conditions you set up contract also with, with the manufacturing, the commercial. Uh, so that's that's in brief, like these are the fronts that, that, that one have to target. I have to say, being JC accredited, as a matter of fact, being the first JC accredited center outside Europe had facilitated a lot of background work in terms of like IPPs and SOPs and so we have a, like a, a designated uh, cell therapy quality management uh, uh, team, and that, that team had worked uh, initially, originally, with, with colleagues, as I have mentioned, with Medical College of Wisconsin and Mayo Clinic primarily to put uh, the SOPs or, or the IPPs. So that's in brief. Thank you, Dr. Mahmoud. The second part of the question was, uh, what is the research landscape of uh, cell and gene therapy in Saudi Arabia in general? I think uh, a gene therapy of a great relevance. You know, we are like Middle East as countries with like high marital consanguinity and, uh, and uh, genetic diseases. So uh, this is a big challenging the front will be also sickle cell hemophilia the fanconies i mean we have large uh, largest world largest series of fanconi transplants so these are like gene editing in the same lab that we are now working on we had a big grant government a grant to support the car t cell and gene editing lab and uh, we are working i mean decisively on gene editing and we have started actually with with uh, like biomarine on uh, gene therapy for hemophilia, we have done recently. Uh, but and I think, and we are working with Rocket Pharma on Fanconi. But uh, I think uh, this has to, to, I mean, I think a lot of the neighboring countries are the world number one countries in terms of genetic diseases. So there is a pressing need, and uh, this is, I'm talking apart from the CAR T cell itself, but I think. Uh, the CAR T cell project itself can facilitate the gene editing uh, technology. So we are working on both the fronts, the CAR T cell, and trying to be like, if you want to call it, first adapters in, in, in evolving CAR T cell therapy, be it be like what other colleagues have mentioned, myelomas or whatever, fixed antigens being identified. But also important when you talk about regional matter is the gene editing and focusing on genetic disease, sickle cell. We're working with Web Vertex Pharma also closely and with other companies. Thank you, Dr. Mahmoud. I think it's great to know the uh, several other gene therapy trials are underway in your country and uh, we look forward to its success. Uh, may I now request Dr. Ali to moderate the next question. Uh, I think the next question uh, uh, was already answered by Dr. Mahmoud. So maybe we'll go to the third question, yeah. Yes, uh, so basically the third question is for uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Alvaro Urbano. Uh, uh, how would one enrich CAR T cells for T cell central memory and stem cell memory phenotypes? And while its benefit is obvious, what would be the drawback of such an approach? Okay, thank you. Thank you for the question. It, it, is, uh, it is really important, uh, that uh, issue, because I think that the, the, the experience in modifying the conditions of the, of the car expansions are limited. Uh, so for sure, there is a field, uh, it is a field that uh, is uh, at the beginning. So uh, we, we, we have uh, in the final product 44% of cars expressing a phenotype considered that uh, allows a long persistent in peripheral blood a long, and a high potency. That is the central memory with 30% of the cells, stem cell memory, 5%, and also naive cell with uh, close to seven or nine, nine, nine 99%. So we are quite uh, comfortable uh, uh, having this uh, great proportion of cells 
with long persistent and proliferative uh, uh, potential. Uh, I must say that we uh, we did two uh, different conditions. Uh, is first is we use human serum that was better than without human uh, serum. Second is that we tried uh, to use interleukin-2 and, and interleukin-7 and 15, and the results were better with interleukin-7 interleukin plus interleukin-15 than using interleukin-2. So we decided to use interleukin-7 plus interleukin-15. We haven't used interleukin-21. So maybe uh, to do experiments, adding interleukin-21 uh, or substitute interleukin-7 uh, with interleukin-21 would improve the results, maybe. Uh, so, but we are uh, uh, we have performed all of cases in with these conditions. We will follow uh, with these conditions because it's our clinical uh, protocol, uh, and and the, the approval of the car is under these conditions. But we may do is to reduce the number of days of expansion because the number of cars that we need is much lower than the number we have at the end of the expansion because it, it seems that reducing the days of the expansion, the proportion of cells with a, a higher potency, higher proliferation index, a more image, immature phenotype is higher. So I think this is what uh, will do. Another aspect to improve the phenotype of the T cells is probably to collect T cells in an earlier phase of the disease of the patient, not as we do now, that is after the patient having received several lines of cytotoxics and uh, these T cells are unfit. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Alvaro. And actually, I have uh, another question to you. So we have seen throughout these different presentations that one of the major barriers uh, 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 for CAR T cell uh, therapy uh, uh, is uh, access to CAR T cells in different parts of the world, as well as the financial uh, cost uh, of uh, commercial cars. And uh, so the, the, the great potential uh, of uh, academic cars and point of care uh, production of CAR T cells is quite obvious. So my question is, uh, how would the uh, uh, authorization by the Spanish government uh, uh, to, uh, uh, for your uh, uh, academic cars to be used in different centers of uh, Spain, uh, even outside a clinical trial by decision of the treating physician. So how this would facilitate uh, the uh, access uh, to this type of academic car uh, in other countries in Europe or even uh, outside Europe. Uh, so I'm uh, talking, uh, for example, uh, about uh, uh, our center at the Academic University of Beirut, uh, which is uh, uh, also the second JC accredited center in the Arab world. Uh, so how would this uh, authorization change the game? Yeah, thank you, Ali. Yeah, so for us, it has been extremely important in our, uh, in, in, in our health system, because I think that is, like a, 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 it's a counterbalance with uh, pharma companies. So now in the health system, I think that we have just one player, one main player is pharma company putting the price. And, and I think it's extremely difficult for a health system to discuss really the price of a drug, especially if it is a drug administered for a patient that is dying or if uh, the patient has a neoplasm in, in general. So I think that it's very important that the academic world uh, 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 has this counterbalance. And it, it, it may discuss uh, the, that the price of the drug may be different. It's the only way to reduce the cost imposed by pharma company in the health system in the world. So for us, uh, the, for the Spanish health system, the cost of a car, as you know, 
is, uh, is lower than one third of the price of the cost of a commercial car. This has allowed us uh, to use it in more patients and also probably for the Spanish health system to discuss with pharma companies the price of their car. So I think that the level of discussion, the level of, uh, uh, of ways of reducing the price of the car is better if in that country there is an academic, an academic car. So how to translate this, uh, to export this to other countries? Uh, it is difficult because it, it's a lot of work. So we can't prepare the clinical trial in another country. We can't uh, 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 prepare all the regulatory aspects. So it's a lot of work for the other country with the, 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 the team of the other country. What we can do is just to transfer our knowledge or to transfer the vector. But in that country, uh, that particular country must receive the support from the manager of the hospital or the manager of the institution, uh, the, 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 the Ministry of Health of that country is, must support the project because uh, the, 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 the resources are, are lower than for a pharma company, but are still the resources need to put in place that clinical trial are, are, are high. So we can help uh, sending the, the, the vector and the, a, 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 an agreement, but the, 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 the amount of work is, uh, is huge for, for, for that country. But uh, uh, sorry to, uh, to, uh, to repeat it, it's extremely important to receive the local and, and uh, the state support for that for the project in that in that country what you're saying is uh, extremely important because uh, uh, listening to yesterday presentations uh, one of the major disappointment was that initially there was a hope that uh, when you have more uh, uh, products available there will be uh, I'm talking about commercial products there will be competition and in general, competition will uh, make the price go down. And unfortunately, what we have seen is that the more products uh, that we're having, the higher the price. The, the price of car T, commercial car T, actually is not going down, but it's going up. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, that, that's the, 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 the situation. If, if I know that a very similar product uh, is paid uh, by 300,000 euros, why my product uh, will cost, uh, would cost 100,000 euros. So if I know that the, the, that state uh, is able to pay 300,000 euros, I will ask for 300,000 euros. I think that Christian uh, wants to, to comment something. Uh, Christian? Yes, thank you. I, I think that, um, you know, this is a very complex topic because the price of a drug does not only reflect the cost of manufacturing. Cost of manufacturing is only one of the drivers. And if you think of conventional drugs, actually the cost of manufacturing a small uh, tyrosine kinase inhibitor, as an example, is nothing. Uh, it's only a very small fraction of the price that you pay. If you also consider... Um, uh, TKI, such as imatinib, uh, in, in, in the USA, the price of imatinib, if I am correct, is still increasing while it has been de decreasing in Europe. So that definitely demonstrates that the uh, cost of manufacturing, again, is only one driver. And the companies now come to you and they ask for a very high price tag because they have to recover the cost of research and development, which in the field of CAR T cells is even more disputable since most of this research has been done by academic centers that already benefited from, from public money. And also they are now coming to justify the price by the money that you spare by not using other uh, alternatives, other therapeutic opportunities. Uh, and, and basically that brings us to the point, can we 
definitely cure patients and a significant proportion of patients because maybe you want to pay 400,000 euros or dollars for a treatment that may cure 90% of your patients and then you don't have any treatment to apply to them. But conversely, if the fraction of cured patients is only 30%, or if you don't cure patients, like it happens to be in multiple myeloma, how do you justify the price? So again, this is a very complex, uh, uh, complex issue. I think we can all agree on one point is that if we want the field to expand, then the costs of single drugs need to go down, whatever the way you achieve this goal. Uh, it's way too expensive that we can afford treating more than a few hundred patients in every country every year. Oh. Actually, I have on the chat another question to Dr. Chabano. Uh, what is the landscape for in situ programming of autologous CAR T cells? That is a very in interesting question um, since we all are underlining the fact that we are dealing with a new class of medicinal products and this is very innovative therapies, but maybe this will be wiped out in a few years from now. Uh, what may be achieved first is, you know, having allogenic CAR T cells, which will um, provide a, a, a significantly different approach to the treatment. But to go straight to the point that you mentioned, there are already preclinical publications demonstrating that you can reprogram T cells in vivo. Uh, so what you infuse into the patient is a nanoparticle, and as, a, and a, as an example, that will specifically target T cells in vivo. Uh, and the uh, recombinant DNA sequences will then be uh, integrated into the T cells and these cells will be reprogrammed to um, um, express the uh, relevant uh, sequence for the chimeric antigen receptor. And that has been published already, if I remember correctly, four years or five years ago by a group in Seattle. And there has been uh, several confirmatory publications since there. So maybe the future is there. And then it will come to your hospital rather as a conventional drug rather than as a living drug, such as CAR T cells, not needing any ex vivo uh, uh, reprogrammation. But at this stage, this looks a little bit like sci-fi. Uh, it may not be so far from us as we think. So actually I have a question, a provocative question to the panelists. Uh, uh, with the increasing availability and uh, uh, reported efficacy of uh, bispecific antibodies that are targeting the same antigens that are targeted by CAR T cells. So uh, with a kind of uh, uh, proposing the, a similar mechanism of action to CAR T cells by uh, uh, making the uh, patient autologous lymphocytes, autologous T cells, as serial killer for uh, the uh, 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 malignant cells. So, uh, bispecific anti CD20, anti CD19, bispecific anti BCMA in myeloma. So, how would uh, that affect the use of CAR T cells? the regulatory aspects of CAR T cells and the cost of CAR T cells? It's a difficult question, I know. Maybe I'll start and then Alvaro and uh, Mahmoud can, can continue. <laughs> so maybe let's, our, let's... Our knowledge oh, is ahead. evolving. I mean, the... Go ahead, Mahmoud. Our knowledge is evolving. And I think even if you look at real world, sorry. Yeah, our knowledge is evolving. And if you look at the CIBM PMTR data, our B cell lymphomas end of the day with relatively not very long follow up, only about 30% are cured with CAR T cell therapy. And you have seen publications about glufitimab and bi specific 
uh, my technology treatments that was given after CAR T cell failure with great success. So, and all the bite is also new. So we, we have knowledge is it's still in infancy about these and it's gonna be refined with time and based on the studies and outcome studies. Just reminds me with, with uh, uh, not that old, but I think in the 90s and bone marrow transplant in the late 80s, where everyone was subjected to the procedure. So uh, we are just learning. And I think knowledge about all of these therapies will evolve and will be refined with time. Hard to answer these questions now. Christian, you wanted to... Yes, I think there are some, uh, I think Mahmoud is absolutely right. We are still uh, learning and we have a long way to go before we can uh, answer this question. And I doubt that there will be a one size fits all uh, answer anyway. But there are some basic facts uh, that, we can, that we can tell. The first one is that CAR T cells can be efficacious after uh, monoclonal antibody or B-specific antibody treatments that has been demonstrated in patients with relapse and refractory ALL. More interestingly, there is recent evidence, and there was this communication at the last EA meeting last week by Catherine Thieblemont uh, regarding a B-specific antibody targeting both CD19 and CD3 after CAR T cell treatment. And uh, Catherine showed that, uh, if I remember correctly, approximately 40% of the it. patients with CAR T cells with prior CAR T cells treatment did actually enjoy a robust response to this B specific antibody. Um, so I guess that depending on the, um, on, on, on the nature structure, uh, and targets of the B-specific antibodies, we may use them sequentially before or after, or maybe before and after CAR T cells treatment to improve the uh, response rate uh, in these patients. Obviously, the more options we have, the most uh, important maybe the, the consequences and the price to get back to the, to the, to the previous uh, discussion. I think also what patients do enjoy actually with CAR T cells is that this is a one-shot treatment. I was mentioning the multiple myeloma patients who do relapse, the vast majority of the patients will relapse after treatment with CAR T cells. But despite the fact that they expect to relapse, they enjoy a significant period of time without any treatment. And actually, if we think of quality of life, as that's what patients report, this is very much appreciated, but that for a few months, they can be off treatment. So this is another potential benefit of using these therapies. Obviously, be specific or monoclonal antibodies, you have to administer uh, multiple uh, injections to observe a response. Dr. Urbano? Yeah, well, I, I totally agree with uh, previous comments with uh, Christiana and Mamou. Uh, uh, yeah, the, the great advantage of the B-specifics uh, is that they are already prepared. They are already ready for administering to the patient. There is no need to prepare the to prepare it for a couple of weeks or one month or more, like a like a like a car that can be repeated the dose. Uh, but on the other hand, the car uh, has the great advantage of the co-stimulatory molecule. Uh, so, in the sense that uh, a car is some, somehow is like a B specific. So it has uh, the anchorage to the tumoral cell, uh, like uh, a B specific, and it puts the T cell to the tumoral cell, but get the, with the great advantage that this T cell is not a normal T cell, it's a T cell with the, the second, the stimulatory molecule with the second signal in the T cell. So in principle, the potency of a car should be higher than a B specific. And also the persistence of the car is the half-life, let's say, of the car is much longer than a B-specific. So in acute lymphoblastic leukemia, three, four months in most of the cars, in, uh, lymph, uh, in uh, uh, chronic lymphocytic leukemia or non-Hodgkin lymphoma, we see that many patients, one year after the car, still uh, is in the peripheral blood. So if... Uh, we may compare both. Maybe the clinical advantage might be in, uh, uh, hypothetically in, in the car. But as, in as always in medicine, clinical results 
will define which is, let's say, the winner of, of, of both. But as uh, Christian has commented, probably the complementary use of both will be of benefit for, for, the, for the patient. Yeah, so, I, I, yeah, I completely agree with the comments uh, that were given by earlier panelists. I think as we move on, we have had five generations so far. As we move on, we are going to embrace new technologies like in situ uh, cars or bi specific, uh, and and only time will tell. I think you know it's absolutely correct that one size may not fit all for all diseases. So uh, this is going to evolve, and we will be embracing these technologies in the next few years as we move on. Yes. So uh, the next question uh, is from the live feed. Uh, so um, there are a couple of questions, in fact. Uh, would it be possible to engage not-for-profit foundations to cover the cost of initial manufacturing? Um, maybe Dr. Alvaro can kind of give his inputs. Yeah, OK, thank you. Yeah, this, this was our first, our first step uh, to initiate the, the academic program in Spain. Uh, that was a. Uh, 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 from civil society foundations that uh, 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 put the first resource, the first resource uh, to initiate the clinical program. But I think that is is just short, short distance. I think that if we want to establish a sustainable program of an of an academy hospital developing uh, cars uh, in a particular country, it is necessary the support of the government. So with uh, specific grants to, uh, instead of paying 3 million euros for 10 patients uh, with a commercial car, is to put these 3 million euros in a clinical, in an academic program to develop for 30 patients uh, in the, so, uh, or for instance, the Dutch government that has uh, provided 35, 35 million euros for doing a comparative study of a commercial car against a, 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 a academic car. So I think that is good, the non-profit organizations, but I think is what we need is the, 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 the support of the government, especially in the countries that the health system is public, is universal. So Thank you, actually, the, uh, actually, a follow-up question uh, from the live feed on what uh, uh, Dr. Urbano just mentioned uh, is uh, if there was an in-house Middle East, and I would say even in other part of the world, based CAR T cell manufacturing operation, would this lower the price with easier access? So who, who want to take the, maybe Dr. Urbano, then Mahmoud and Christian. Okay, uh, in Spain, that maybe was doctor, uh, maybe Alvaro can comment, but there are a lot of activities in China. Had, oh, sorry, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, but uh, it was broken. If you may repeat, thank you. Yeah, Ali, can you hear me? Yes. And I think there are some like uh, promises. There are Indian companies, like very well structured Indian companies, even collaborating with major institutions. Like, I mean, in the United States, also, if you look at China, obviously, and there are more than 50 companies had filed IND and availability of lentiviral vectors and other things. I one would hope that the cost and how do you, do you set up a contract? Obviously, you cannot pay for every product, particularly in a developing country. You have to, there is ways to set up the contract. So we will not pay for like certain number of products. So hopefully with time, the uh, hope I'm not sure as, as what Elvaro said and, and, and the Christian, I mean, there's like competing increase in the price. I hope with time, this, the price may come down with the, I mean, they, I mean the more more companies putting the products in the market. Yeah, I I, I think uh, I completely agree with Dr. Mahmoud. Uh, I can speak from my experience in India. I I think you know there are academic centers uh, who are driving their own. Uh, cell programs uh, 
because uh, it's a self-paying system in India. Insurance doesn't exist that much. And unless and until the cost of a drug uh, is in the vicinity of uh, $10,000 to $20,000, it is not going to fly at all, yeah. self-paying system. So I know of a couple of academic centers who are working towards this goal. I also know of industries, a couple of industries. Uh, I think they have uh, taken up technologies uh, from Spain and other uh, leading uh, uh, centers in the world. And they are trying to uh, basically develop commercial products uh, with some local uh, 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 inputs and academic inputs. Uh, so the goal is going to be, you know, you make it cheaper, you treat a larger number of patients and in a country with uh, 1.3 billion, this is how this is going to work and predominantly a self-paying system. Um, yeah, thank you. So uh, I, I, I was think maybe I can uh, yeah. I can Christian. first comment maybe a first comment on, on that I think the, the the problem is if you are to manufacture um, CAR T cells or other forms of cellular therapy or gene therapies the investments are high uh, at least in Europe they are because there is a sort of dogma, religious belief that uh, all the medicinal products must be produced in compliance with good manufacturing practices. And again, these infrastructures are a very high cost for building and operating them. Uh, so the, for, for pharma companies, obviously they offset the cost of manufacturing through selling their approved manufacturing manufactured products. For academia, it's a bit different because we do not intend, with very few exceptions, to bring products to the market. And we are there to produce on relatively small scale to fulfill the needs of the neighboring population. And the question is, how do you recover your costs? And there we come back again to political issues, and it can be very different from one country to the other. Because if there is a system in place to recover your costs, then I'm truly convinced that we can have academic facilities properly working. If not, you cannot make a sustainable activity. And if I draw some examples from our situations in France, that's exactly what happens. I mean, on one hand, the, the healthcare authorities are very strict in terms of being compliant with GMP. And on the other hand, the public hospital is under financial pressure, making it very difficult to, uh, again, uh, accumulate all the needed resource. And there comes the questions with the charities. Charities can, of course, help academic infrastructures to work for some time, but they rarely can make them sustainable over extended period of time. And in France, if you think of the... Um, there was a big charity dealing with myopathies and they collect a lot of money every year during a, a, a one year, a, a one day a year, big event. And they established a facility to produce gene therapies for this group of diseases. Ultimately, they sold it to a, a foreign company. The government supported the creation of a, a, an infrastructure called Cell for Cure, which was designed to produce uh, cell and gene therapies never worked while uh, in the public-private system. It was ultimately sold to Novartis that is, being, that is now using it to produce TISA cell for, for, for European patients. So again, I, I think ultimately all of this is really a matter of, of politics and how healthcare authorities see this very peculiar class of medicinal products that you know, brings together two very different worlds, the world of pharmaceutical company on one hand, the world of cellular and tissue therapies on the other hand. And if um, healthcare agencies are not supportive of these activities, then again, it's very difficult to establish those and make them sustainable. And that's where the difference is easy to see between Spain as an example, and, and, and France, and I had discussions on several occasions with Alvaro and his colleagues. And obviously in Spain, the Spanish authorities took a different posture than the position to, taken by French authorities. 
so actually to follow up on what uh, Dr. Shabano was uh, mentioning, uh, and as the Mahmoud uh, uh, mentioned, uh, uh, if we take the example of China, uh, this is probably the place where we have the highest number of CAR T cell uh, treated patients, even higher than in the US. And uh, in their centers, what we can see are uh, four aspects. The first is that access is uh, not throughout China, but in many places. Two, the time of production is in general less than two weeks between the harvest and the infusion. Three, uh, it is allowing for very quick innovation and they are using in many uh, situation uh, CAR T cells against two antigens, for example, which we did not discuss today, but this is something that can uh, increase the efficacy of CAR T uh, by uh, avoiding uh, escape mechanisms uh, of tumor cells uh, by, through down regulation of one antigen. And uh, for the cost uh, is uh, tremendously cheaper. And at the end of the day, if we look to the results of CAR T cell therapy in China, uh, well, I don't think that the results are different from the CAR T, the commercial CAR T that are used in the US or Western Europe. So uh, with 8 billion people throughout the world, and all the uh, patients who are in need of CAR T, uh, what are the barriers for the Chinese experience to be extended to Europe or to other uh, less privileged parts of the world? Yeah, uh, thank you, Dr. Ali and all the panelists for this very insightful discussion. I think in the interest of time, I, I think we should move on. Um, so uh, before I hand over to Dr. Ali for the closing remarks, uh, from my side, I would like to thank all the panelists, ASD City staff, uh, Sam Shelley Pat, and also Dr. Kenneth Cornetta. And uh, over to you, Dr. Ali Bazar Baki for the closing remarks. Thank you, Jay. And uh, I would like to take this uh, opportunity uh, to thank again all the staff and uh, of the uh, American uh, Society for Gene and Cell Therapy for taking this initiative and uh, putting together this uh, exciting uh, uh, program over uh, two days. Uh, uh, actually, uh, the presentations were fantastic, but the discussion was also uh, quite fantastic and exciting. I would like to take this uh, opportunity to thank our uh, 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 presenters and panelists today and yesterday, uh, to thank all the uh, participants for their attention and to wish you all a very nice uh, day or evening, depending on, uh, or night maybe, uh, on, uh, on which part of the world you are living in, uh, with the hope of having more activities like that in the near future. Bye-bye.